Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. This is the Sunlu AMS heater, a device designed to turn the Bamboo Lab AMS into a filament dryer. I've received quite a few requests to review mods and upgrades for Bamboo Lab machines, but until now, I haven't featured any on this channel. That's because Bamboo Lab uses closed source firmware and is more advanced than most companies in the industry, so I've always been a little cautious about whether third-party upgrades are truly improvements. Even if the upgrades work at first, a future firmware update could easily break compatibility and lead to unexpected issues. That's why I've avoided modifying my Bamboo Lab printers, which already perform exceptionally well right out of the box. In this video, I will test this with my Bamboo Lab X1 and see how it performs. I would like to thank Sunlu for sending us this device and for sponsoring today's video. With that, let's get started. The unit I received is a testing unit, or I should call it a prototype. The packaging should be the same as the final version, but you can see the surface is not finished. It temporarily has a logo printed on the vinyl cover. While the final version should have a frosted finish like this, the rest of the components should be the same. As you can see, the design of the machine is simple, just like other filament dryers. It has a PCB in the middle, which is connected to a temperature and humidity sensor in the center. There are two ceramic heaters with fans on both sides. Inside each fan cover, you'll see a blower fan, and each one circulates the air and blows through the heater to warm up the unit. On top of the unit, there are two holes. You may want to open them to let the moisture escape. To install it, you need to flip the AMS upside down and unscrew two screws on each side to remove the stock lid. Then, you can simply place the AMS heater on top and tighten those four screws back. The touchscreen is similar to all other Sunlu dryers. Use the power button to turn it on, then use the set button to switch between the settings you want to adjust. You can use the default settings for different filaments like PC, nylon, ABS, TPU, PETG, and PLA. You may also manually set the temperature you need by using the set key to move to the SV, which I guess means set value, while the PV is the process value or the current temperature. You can set it as high as 70 degrees Celsius. For the timer, it can go up to 99 hours. It seems pretty simple. We'll now move on to the temperature test and see if it can reach the claimed 70 degrees Celsius. I'll start by placing an external temperature sensor at the bottom and see how long it takes to heat up to the maximum temperature. It took about two minutes to heat up to 50 degrees Celsius and three minutes, 40 seconds to 60 degrees Celsius. After about six and a half minutes, the sensor temperature reached 70 degrees Celsius. But since the internal sensor is located at the top of the lid inside the compartment, it should take longer to reach 70 degrees Celsius as the hot air is not directly blowing into it. After about nine and a half minutes, it reached 70 degrees Celsius. At the same time, the sensor at the bottom showed a maximum temperature of 78 degrees Celsius. After about 14 and a half minutes, it started to stabilize and both sensors read almost the same temperature. Okay, since we tested with an empty unit, I'll now put four spools of different types of nylon filament and fill up the AMS. This way, the sensor will be blocked by a spool of filament. The timer is now about 16 minutes. We'll see how long it takes for the block sensor to reach 70 degrees Celsius again. After about an hour, it reached around 68 degrees Celsius, and that's the highest temperature measured. It seems it still falls within an acceptable range. Next, we'll test the power consumption. When it starts heating from room temperature to the maximum 70 degrees Celsius, it draws over 350 watts at the start and stays between 200 to 300 watts. As you can see, the power keeps dropping as the temperature rises. Once it reaches 70 degrees Celsius, it stops heating and consumes only about 5 watts. When the temperature drops below 68 degrees Celsius, it starts drawing 200 watts to heat the unit again and this cycle repeats during drying. I tested the AMS2 Pro earlier this year. It has the heating feature, but it won't allow heating while printing. The main reason is that it may soften the filament and jam the gears. So I'll print some PLA and keep drying at Sunlu's recommended temperature of 50 degrees Celsius to see if it causes any issues. We'll start with something simple, a model with two colors, mainly black and some white text, with the AMS heater set to 50 degrees Celsius. <music> 
This is a mid-sized print that took a little over five hours to finish. There are only two colors and no rapid color changes, so it seems heating at 50 degrees Celsius doesn't jam the AMS gears, and everything worked as expected. Then I'll try something more challenging, printing an infinity cube with four colors and four different brands of filaments. Since every layer requires all four colors, the model will undergo about 300 filament changes. Just demonstrating that everything works isn't very fun, so I'll slightly increase the temperature from the recommended 50 degrees Celsius to 55 degrees Celsius and see if it causes any issues. It worked normally until about 25% completion, then the print paused with a filament runout message, which shouldn't have happened. I opened the AMS to check, I pulled out the filaments, and saw the Sunlu High Speed PLA, Bamboo Lab Basic PLA, and Voxel PLA were softened, and the gears squeezed them. The print couldn't continue. For the Prusament Galaxy Green, since it's stiffer, it still worked okay. I cut all the filaments, which should give you a better look at how they were ground by the gears. Then I continued the print, but this time, I set the heating temperature back to the recommended 50 degrees Celsius to see if it could finish. Okay, it worked fine. The print finished in 10 hours. Since all four colors were used on every single layer, most of the time was spent on filament changes, the print looks fine. It's in line with other multicolor prints with the AMS, but you can see one disadvantage of using a single print head for multiple colors. It wastes about five times more filament than the model itself. Next, I'll try some PA6 nylon carbon fiber. I won't pre-dry the filament and we'll just let it dry and print at the same time. The model took a little over an hour to print. Unlike undried PLA, which still works fine in dry regions like California, nylon is a different story. There was a lot of stringing, and the print turned out poorly. I let the filament dry for another eight hours and printed the same model again. This time, the model looked cleaner, but there was still some stringing in different areas. Compared to the undried one, it showed improvement. The inside of the model also had less stringing, but it was still far from perfect, as nylon requires complete drying for the best results. I dried the filament for another 8 hours, so by now the spool had been drying for nearly 18 hours. The sensor showed 12% humidity, and the AMS showed a similar reading of 11%. I printed the same model again to see how it looked. This time, it looked pretty good. Comparing all three models, one with no drying, one dried for eight hours, and one dried for 18 hours. The improvement was obvious. Generally, 70 degrees Celsius is still not ideal for drying nylon, but if you dry it long enough, it still works pretty well. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this device, starting with the pros. One, the design of this device is smart. It replaces the AMS lid and transforms the unit into a filament dryer. Installation is simple. Just remove four screws to swap out the original lid for the heated one. Two, since it doesn't involve any firmware changes or communication with the firmware and is only physically attached to the AMS, it won't cause compatibility issues like many other third-party devices. Three, it reaches the claim temperature, and based on my test with one of the toughest materials, nylon carbon fiber, it performs just as effectively as other Sunlu filament dryers I've previously reviewed. That may sound expected, but I've tested a few filament dryers in the past that couldn't actually reach their advertised temperatures. Four, one of my main complaints about the AMS and the new AMS2 Pro is that they can't be stacked, which means using multiple units takes up more table space. However, with the flat heater top, you can easily stack multiple AMS units and save space. Now for the cons, one. 
The test unit I received is a prototype, and as you can see, the surface is temporarily covered with vinyl, which doesn't look very presentable, especially next to the X1 carbon, which has a sleek design. According to Sunlu's website, the final version will feature a frosted finish. I don't have the final product on hand, but I hope it will look better when installed on the AMS. 2. From what we can see on the product page, the unit is supposed to have a storage mode or humidity monitoring mode that remains off by default and automatically turns on when the humidity rises above 50%, then shuts off again once it drops to 20%. Keeping it at 50% may be fine for most filaments, but it is definitely not low enough for nylon. So, I tested this feature on my unit and found that I can actually set the target humidity as low as 25%. Once the humidity rises above 25%, it turns on and dries it below 20%, then shuts off. If the mass production units offer the same ability to set the humidity level to 25%, that would be a pro rather than a con. Sun Lu should update their website as soon as possible since this is a great feature. In conclusion, the Sunlu AMS heater does its job well. It turns your AMS into a filament dryer and allows it to dry filament even while printing. The only thing to watch out for is the drying temperature. For example, if you're printing with PLA and accidentally set the temperature to 70 degrees Celsius, it could soften the filament and potentially jam the gears of the AMS. So in printing, I recommend using a slightly lower temperature than the standard drying setting. Aside from that, the unit works reliably, so if you're interested in this AMS heater, I included the link in the video description below. Please also check out my website auroratechchannel.com, which tracks prices for major 3D printers, laser engravers, and CNC machines to help you find great deals. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.